Hello everyone, this is Shankarai's environment series. You can watch the chapters which are already covered in the playlist of Vaishai's YouTube channel. Also do watch other playlists in the channel. These are part of paid courses, but if response is good, they will be made free. If the video is good, you can like, subscribe and leave a feedback comment. Serious UPSC aspirants can contact Vice Sir on WhatsApp 7200681675 for test series or foundational videos. Today, let us look into Chapter 14 Marine Organisms of Shankar I.A.'s book. Plankton. The term plankton refers to a group of organisms which float in the surface waters of the rivers, lakes and oceans. They include both microscopic plants and animals that is phytoplankton and zooplankton. Phytoplankton like algae and zooplankton like crustaceans and protozoans. The locomotory power of the planktons is limited so that their distribution is controlled largely by currents in the aquatic ecosystems. These phytoplankton, phytoplankton and zooplankton are found in all aquatic ecosystems except swift moving waters. The growth rate, productivity and species diversity of plankton in tropical waters, especially in mangrove waters, are high. Phytoplankton It is derived from the Greek words phyto meaning plant and plankton meaning meat to wander. Phytoplankton are microscopic plant organisms that live in aquatic environments both salty and fresh. Some of the phytoplanktons are bacteria, some are protist and most are single-celled plants. Among these most common are cyanobacteria, silica encased diatoms, dinoflagellates, green algae etc. Phytoplankton produce more than 60% of oxygen produced from all plants. Like any other plants, they have chlorophyll to capture sunlight. They use photosynthesis to turn it into chemical energy. They take carbon dioxide, release oxygen and they all use photosynthesis to manufacture their own food. Also, they consume other organisms. These microalgae are present throughout the lighted regions of all the water bodies, seas and oceans, including the polar regions. Their total biomass is many times greater than that of the total plants on land. They serve as the pasture grounds in the aquatic environment. Sea crates are one of the few snakes that go to land to lay their eggs while most others like the olive sea snake will give birth in the water. This is just for the information. Factors affecting phytoplankton's biodiversity, light. Phytoplanktons are limited to the uppermost layers of the ocean because they need light for photosynthesis. The photosynthetic rate varies with light intensity. Nutrients. Major inorganic nutrients required by these phytoplanktons are nitrogen and phosphorus. Diatoms and silicoflagellates require silicate in significant amounts. And few of the phytoplanktons can fix nitrogen and grow in areas where the concentration of nitrogen is low. Concentration of nitrate is low. And they also require trace amounts of iron. This limits phytoplankton growth in ocean bodies because iron concentrations are low in water bodies. 
temperature. This also influences photosynthetic production along with other factors. Generally, the rate of photosynthesis increases with increase in temperature, but after reaching a certain point, it diminishes sharply. Salinity, it influences primary production. Grazing by zooplankton, it influences the size of the standing crop of phytoplankton and thereby also the rate of production. They consume phytoplankton and thus it is essential to look into this aspect as well. Distribution. Marine phytoplanktons are not uniformly distributed. Highest concentrations are found at high latitudes while the tropics and subtropics have 10 to 100 times lower concentrations. Apart from temperature, salinity, nutrients, the high levels of exposure to solar UVB radiation that normally occur within the tropics and subtropics also influence phytoplankton distribution. Phytoplankton productivity is limited to the euphotic zone. It is the upper layer of the water column where there is sufficient sunlight for photosynthesis. This Position of the organisms in the zone is influenced by the action of wind and waves. Importance of phytoplankton, of course, important for food web. They are the foundation of the aquatic food web. They are the primary producers and it fits everything from microscopic zooplankton to larger organisms. Smaller fish and invertebrates graze on this phytoplankton and those organisms are consumed by bigger ones. Phytoplankton, the carbon cycle and climate change. Phytoplanktons are responsible for most of the transfer of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to the ocean. They consume carbon dioxide and the carbon which is present in the phytoplankton is very much similar to the carbon storage we see in the normal tree, normal plant. Most of the carbon which is present in the phytoplankton are written to the near surface but some falls into the ocean depths as well. This biological carbon pump transfers about 10 gigatons of carbon from the atmosphere to the deep ocean every year. So even the small changes in the growth of phytoplankton may affect carbon dioxide concentrations. These are facts. Sharks have a sensory organ called ampullae of Lorenzini, which they use to feel the electrical field coming from its brain. Silverfish is an insect which is found in old unused books. Zooplankton. They play vital role in food web of the food chain, nutrient recycling and in transfer of organic matter from primary producers to secondary consumers. They are more abundant within mangrove waterways and than in the coastal places. Large proportion of the mangrove habitat are zooplanctivores. They determine the quantum of fish stock examples tiny flagellates, giant jellyfish, etc. Seagrass. These are angiosperms that is flowering plants, marine flowering plants that resemble grass in appearance. Of course they produce flowers, have strap like or oval leaves and a root system. They grow in shallow coastal waters with sandy bottoms and require calm areas. They are the only group of higher plants adapted to life in salt water. This is important. Major seagrass meadows in India occur along southeast coast of Tamil Nadu and in lagoons of few Lakshadweep islands. You can see few of them in Andaman and Nicobar islands too. 
the sea grasses in this area tells us that these grow in high salinity clarity of the water and sandy they need a sandy substratum hence they are present more in the coastal areas of tamil nadu and lakshadweep islands functions sea grass beds physically help to reduce wave and current energy to filter suspended sediments stabilize bottom sediments to control erosion they provide habitat for marine invertebrates and fishes they are widespread in lagoon and in such areas the population of fish and migratory birds are also higher due to availability of food sea grasses on reef flats and near estuaries are also nutrient sinks they filter nutrient and thus acts as nutrient sinks threats to sea grass beds eutrophication that is more nutrient presence in marine water bodies eutrophication siltation trawling coastal engineering construction over exploitation for commercial purposes are the major threats for sea grass beds how to manage this management of sea grass beds so it should be mapped major sea grass beds should be mapped and areas has to be identified for preservation dredging should be carried out far away from sea grass beds seaweeds they are thalloid plants which mean they have no differentiation of tissues like roots stems and leaves microscopic algae they have leaf like appendages they are larger and visible marine plants found attached to rocks corals and other submerged strata in the intertidal and shallow subtidal zones of the sea they grow in shallow coastal waters wherever sizable substrata is available based on the color of their pigmentation seaweeds are broadly classified into blue green green brown red seaweeds etc functions of these seaweeds they act as food for marine organism also provide habitat for fish breeding grounds they are source of sediment uses of seaweeds they are important as food for humans feed for animals and fertilizer for plants they are used as a drug for goiter treatment intestinal and stomach disorders products like agar agar and alginates iodine are extracted from seaweeds which have commercial value by the biodegradation of seaweeds methane like gases can be produced in large quantities which are economically important gases extracts of some seaweed species show antibacterial activity they are used as the potential indicators of pollution in coastal ecosystem particularly heavy metal pollution because they have this ability to bind metals strongly harmful effects of seaweeds rotting seaweed is a potent source of hydrogen sulfide which is a highly toxic gas and there has been incidents of hydrogen sulfide poisoning it can cause vomiting and diarrhea threats to seaweeds similar to that of sea grass if you enjoyed it you can like the video and give your feedback in the comment section thank you